Australia's been monitored by satellites for at least the last 30 years, from the United States Landsat mission through to more recent satellites um, by the Europeans, the Japanese, and all of them are providing a rich insight into the Australian continent. The data can tell you basically anything that is changing on the surface of the planet. Natural resource change, environmental change, floods, um, bushfires, it can actually give you information about urban development. If you imagine Australia, a massive continent over seven and a half million square kilometres in size, there's simply no other way to monitor the health and productivity of our landscape without using data such as we get from satellites. The challenge with Earth observation data traditionally has been it's been very difficult to actually progress it from the raw information, the photographs from satellite, through to actionable information. And that's really what we're trying to do with the Digital Earth Australia initiative. Digital Earth Australia is really the culmination of a partnership between Geoscience Australia, the CSIRO and Australia's National Computational Infrastructure. And those three groups together have taken new ways to organise, correct, calibrate and make satellite data available, giving us a real-time insight into the changing Australian landscape. Digital Earth Australia turns what was a collection of separate images of uh, the surface of Australia into an analytical tool effectively. We can now look at any individual area of Australia of around 25 metres square and we can see how that has changed over the last 40 years. When Digital Earth Australia is fully operational, it'll provide what we refer to as decision-ready products, so products that measure the water, the greenness, the dryness of the Australian landscape, and provide that through a whole range of different interfaces to users from government, from industry, right through to the public. Scientists within the branch here at Geoscience Australia are now using Digital Earth Australia to understand everything from the prospectivity of groundwater across northern Australia through to mapping the extent and elevation of our rich intertidal zone. The intertidal zone is that area of land between low and high tide on the Australian coastline uh, that gets periodically inundated with water throughout the tidal cycle. The Intertidal Extents model is designed to try and map the extent and topography of the Australian coastline. Uh, we're looking at a large area. In the context of that model, we're looking at the intertidal uh, mudflats, intertidal sand flats, and also exposed reefs around the country. We've got a 30-year archive of imagery for all of the coast. We make composite images of the highest and the lowest tide sections of the, the archive. And that produces, for the first time in some areas, really clear, crisp images of that intertidal and coastal zone. The insights this has given us has been able to map um, areas in remote Australian regions such as the Kimberley up in northern Australia. We've been able to use the model to um, supplement elevation models across that region where we've previously had no data. In Queensland we've been able to um, assist researchers to actually derive um, the time that intertidal flats are exposed for seabirds. Being able to detect changes over the length of the archive mean that we can start to look at some of the factors that are influencing change, whether they're climate driven events or whether some of that change might be anthropogenic, like the development of things like ports in coastal areas. The ability to characterise groundwater resources across Northern Australia is really important. There's a large impetus to develop um, Australia's north for both agricultural uh, and mining purposes. Uh, however, water resources provide one of the critically limiting factors. So what we do is we look through time to identify areas where either the water bodies are persistent or whether the vegetation um, remains green towards the end of the dry season. And that gives us a lot of insight and helps us to guide drilling regimes and field campaigns to better understand how those groundwater resources are behaving at depth. In the first instance, we're working with government agencies and they're using Digital Earth Australia to improve how they invest in our environment and how they go about protecting and measuring the health of our environment. The role of the Australian Bureau of Statistics is to inform Australia's important decisions. The collaboration between Australian Bureau of Statistics and Geoscience Australia has focused on land cover information. Through the Digital Earth Australia, We've collated um, 30 years worth of satellite imagery and then calibrated it to enable automated image analysis to tease out some of those um, critical land cover themes. Immediately we can see that there's going to be opportunities for looking at water quality in, in lakes and, and rivers, uh, for looking at land use change over time. 
we can be looking at the changes in habitat for animals and threatened species in particular. This new technology, this new data and the access to it is a great game changer in the way we're going to be able to monitor and report on the investments in, in catchment management, environmental management going ahead. What DEA does really well and uniquely is tailor satellite imagery to the Australian needs. Land clearing, for example, is a very big issue in Australia. Remote sensing enables um, us to see where it's happening and we can build in the possibility for uh, automated sort of you know, change detection. It just enables us to do our job much better than we could otherwise. One of the things that's most unique and most powerful about Digital Earth Australia is that all of the technology, all the software and all the analytic capability is entirely open source. What that's leading to is that more and more people embracing this approach to dealing with satellite data. This data that we're dealing with exists for the whole globe. Open Data Cube is really uh, the, the code base that we have built Digital Earth Australia from. We realised that we developed something that had global applicability. So as part of our contribution back to the global community, we decided to make the code base available so that other countries can benefit from this innovation. Using Open Data Cube gives people the building blocks to build up their own large-scale analysis platform, being able to contribute to something that's useful for people throughout Australia and throughout the world. You're doing something that can improve the lives of people everywhere. Digital Earth Australia is a fundamental piece of digital infrastructure, allowing us to truly understand what the state of the environment is. Critically, it'll be just as valuable a tool for industry and for the general public in understanding the health of the world around us.